<clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Um, we're having um, the conference with the Mexican president today, and um, he's going to be uh, talking about... Um, First of all, they always talk about what's happening with the um, um, gas prices some point today. But the rest of it is, well, find out. I haven't seen it yet. It's uh, fresh. All right, here goes. Good morning, everybody. We were finishing doing our accounting because today we're going to be presenting a synthesis, a resumption of what was given yesterday to the co uh, Congress, the, the project uh, and the budget for the following year. So, Arturo Herrera, part, uh, Secretary of Hacienda, will inform regarding this matter. And like every Monday, Ricardo Sheffield is going to inform us and will let us know all Mexicans who's who in the prices of um, combustibles. And if you wouldn't mind, Ricardo, we'll start with Ricardo, luego, eh, Arturo, and then Arturo will do his presentation de, regarding the project the uh, of the budget Nos and expenses and finances. Gracias, días, Good. Hello, buenos everybody. Who's who in the prices of gas? Starting with gas. They found it in La Paz, Baja California Sur, 2152. And the lowest price was found in central Tabasco with 17.89. So there's a margin of 19 cents. Uh, the premium was in Leon, Guanajuato was the most expensive, 21.99. And you can see that so they're using their uh, uh, price for margin in, in the premium. They had a 44 cent margin in Veracruz. It's 18.99. That was the lowest price. And diesel was 21.89 in Hermosillo, Sonora. At Corporativo Ernevisión is the highest with the um, highest margin. And in Central Tabasco, they had one, uh, 1959. But also, when you see it by, by brands, you can see you, there was a lot of rumors this week that the prices of gas have gone up and that something, no, no, there hasn't been a, a variation. You can look at the, on the graph. You can even see it by brand. So the, the most economical remain most economical, and the most expensive remain most expensive. Yeah. So you can see the medium. There has been very little variation. And you can even look for the past three months. There has been very little variation. 
So these rumors that you can look at the actual um, prices and you can see there's you can see their margin is high. It's the providers that have a margin for uh, with the uh, you know the extra charge for the prime premium. El último año de, de Fox y el primer año de Calderón. El último año de Calderón, so, el primer año de Peña So you compare by the end of the year to the first part. Y este primer año del presidente Andrés Manuel López Obrador, se puede ver claramente que en todos estos casos You can see clearly las that the, the least uh, variations were in this year. This was the least variation, as opposed to when one president was going out and the other one was coming in. To demonstrate with numbers and ads that there is no foundation in that rumor that the prices were going up. And they verified 219 uh, service stations because there was 795 complaints. Only one uh, gas station did not allow to be verified. And eight were found not to be giving the actual full amount of the liter. And the one that not allow them, uh, so it's in Oaxaca. And Roberto Ramirez Guzman is the owner. So now they're going to be doing a special operation on him now because he refused. So now they're going to be doing an Android exam. So, so the app um, does not take into account the margin because that's how they can tell. They just look at the final price to the public. They found that the most per the app was in Cualcos, uh, Veracruz. And that was in Talpa was the highest. Premium was 1896 in Aguadulce. And the most expensive um, was in Ocalpa. And diesel was in Guerrero. Guerrero. Uh, 1923 was the least and the most expensive was Chucomuco Michoacán. <laughs> Who's the who in the prices for stationary tanks? It's four um, pesos with a price of 11.7 per liter. And, uh, so now we're talking about the little tanks of gas. The best price was 6.76, uh, which was in uh, San Santiago, Mijualtlán, Puebla. So you can tell who are the people that are gougers. <laughs> so here's another one. <laughs> <laughs> Cylinders was wow. They elevated the price by ten uh, pesos per kilo. The public price was twenty point five six per kilo, and the, the most in, economical in cylinder was in Gasmencuk in Michoacán. So the public price was 13.74. So they checked 38 providers. 14 had infractions and one did not allow to be verified. They immobilized 11. De 42 auto tanques verificados, inmovilizamos tres. So de they, they immobilize three. So if they find they're doing uh, 
illegal acts in terms of not being appropriate in the measurements, they do stop the, the, the uh, place. Okay. Sipi, sipi. Arturo Gómez del Horizonte de Monterrey. Eh, respecto a la demanda colectiva con la empresa Gacera, regarding the proceso, nos puede explicar por qué es de interés de, de los usuarios que han recibido alguna modificación ya del Have proceso. Have they made any modifications uh, regarding? El, el problema lo encontramos en el estado de Nuevo León. De the Coahuila, problem they found was in Nuevo León and here in Mexico. De capital español que comercializa con la marca. Naturgy was the one that was found to have an irregularity. And this company received a petition for two manners. So not to charge for services that they did not. Y el otro tema es que estaban estimando los consumos. They were estimating the consumption. Siempre con un 30% adicional. With an additional 30% to the, uh, then to the actual. And, and so they wouldn't. En consecuencia, pues, se jinepeaban tu 30% que habías pagado, te cortaban el servicio. Estas dos prácticas las estaban haciendo so, porque el, el permiso con el que operaban se los permitían. So Entonces, they had a permit. That allowed them to get away with over uh, charging excess, and then allowed them to modify the uh, permit. So they're also aren't uh, having a problem with one company that was. Charging, and they're also doing a collective initiation action. So they're going judicially after a company that was. Um, not being, not having fair uh, practices. En vez de contender con las modificaciones que se hicieron para que deje de cobrar servicios adicionales y deje de estar estimando el consumo. So they're estimating the consumption and they're charging charges that people did not request and they're trying to get them to stop doing that. So, so they want to resolve it. Um, They've been handled it individually, but they, if they continue with the practice, they're trying to stop the practice of them doing that, not, not just ha have them handle it personally with each client. Okay, we got the next per a speaker. Uh, yesterday we gave the packet. Okay. Yesterday we gave the economical packet for 2020, showing the most important characteristics. And they're going to show what were the most important or relevant uh, 
um, matters. So what were the principles for which they constructed this economical package? It has to um, contribute to the stability macroeconomic of the country and also a discipl uh, fiscal discipline. And 28% of the PIB. In, so they're trying to, they need to maintain. The third one is austerity, uh, Republican austerity. And the fourth one is strengthening or fertilizing and combating elevation. So what are the three greatest objectives we're tr they're trying to gain? Was it had to do with strengthening uh, social um, secure peace for um, Mexico eh, by Pemex used to put so they're talking about the numbers of the barrels that they produced within those years. And they said that production had uh, fallen before. And the next part is the documents that are contained in the uh, economic packet. So the past part was they were reactivating Pemex and trying to have peace and security in Mexico. But this one says uh, critical general critiques um, for economical policies, initiating law in a, from the Federation and projects that had to do with the budget and what money is coming out of the federal government, but do not form part of the packet. So which are the phase, phases for uh, approval? There's six phases. The first one is giving a pre-criteria to the Congress, which is done every year. The second one is this uh, structural um, program. And the, finally, they have to give the full packet to the Congress, which are the documents that they've given. And then the packet of the budget. The deputies, so they have to uh, send it to the Congress. And they have a certain amount of time in order to approve the, the economical packet. The, the law also has to be approved. Once the law of uh, income is agreed on, then they can approve the... Uh, so they have to do it by the latest, by the 15th of November. So you can see the other one was, for, they approved the LIF for the senators was done, had to be done by October 31st. So the latest is October, uh, November 15th. So how do you construct the economic packet? Um, they have a design that permits them to guarantee the uh, budget. So now they're talking about the macroeconomics. So these are the things that uh, the growth, they, it's 1.5 to 2.5. Why is this relevant? Because the income is uh, related to the uh, economic growth. So next one is inflation. 
Nosotros siempre vamos we will always be going with the Bank of Mexico. And we say 3%. And the fourth and fifth are the price of uh, petrol and the production of petrol, which seem to be the most uh, uh, difficult part for them to. Uh, they practically had. And then, so when tension, so the, the price of, um, so the price of actually uh, petrol went down to at 47 at one point, so they did it in a median of 49, because it had something to do with the fighting between the U.S. and China, where it affected the prices of the barrel, where it was at 55. It went down to 47 at one point, so they had to redo their budget. So, so the interest is 7.4% uh, as a median. So, the, uh, so it went down to 8% at one point. So this is important with the design and approval of the um, execution of the budget. Once they've figured out the macroeconomic budget, then they have to see what's the sustainable debt, and that will add, allow us to what's the financing. The variable is this part. Something about the uh, 0.7 on the PIB. They estimate how much they're going to get, and that's what their uh, presumed budget, and that gives us the total resources. Once they determine how much they're going to get, then they can determine what they can spend. And that is exactly the sequence that they approve it in the, in the Congress. First, they do the right side, so which is what has to do with the, with the fed financing, then they, and then the uh, expenses, and then they can say how much they can spend. So the financing is the primary thing. So this is what the uh, numbers that have been were. So that's what they, you can see what the, so they take a look at the at the percentage and then they I guess they get a median between that so they're talking about there was a great recession but it happened everywhere and those deficits and, and that was where the uh, debt came up to 49% on the debt for people. So there's 20% points. Of, so it's about 5 billion uh, pesos difference. And they had to start correcting it since the 2017. You see an asterisk where it said it includes the remnant of operation from the Bank of Mexico. Uh, bank. So we're trying to control the growth of the debt. And so we're going to be lowering it little by little. So we're proposing for 2020 is 0.7 percent. In that graphics, and that will determine the, the point. And the second part is the law of uh, 
income, which tells us what are the alignments which we consume and what we will have for the year 2020. And the most important part is not to increase um, taxes. And, and the second one is to increase, fortify, and to combat evasion and uh, collection of taxes. It's a, the politics will allow us to charge us and what the rate is. So that's how they determine. And the other one is the efficiency with which they collect. So we're trying not to increase the taxes. So they're trying to combat uh, um, illegal acts that would prevent them from collecting the taxes. So they want to encourage people to be more uh, forthcoming with their taxes. <laughs> They expect about 6.1 uh, billion income. So, 584 are coming from so there's a, a graph there that you could see about the prices and um, I, it's too much for me to explain so you guys can just look at it <laughs> stop it if you need to pause it but you can see that that was about the petro and the prices and that they affect the, they believe that affects you know how they can do their budget and that's why it's important to support payments the next part has to do with uh, the different ways of reading the budget. There's three big classifications, and each one uh, answers a different question. So if you expect, ask the question, what is it spent on? What the uh, capital is being, yeah, like what's spent on transferences and purchases and such. And also who's spending the money. And that's what we're going to do administrative. The Secretary of Defense and each, each department. Judicial power. And we can also ask in a different way, what is it spent on? And that's where you classify the uh, functional group. They spend in a different way. Which is, say, for example, the expense of education, but there's, there's other ones that are, would go into. So they, it depends on where they fall, where they group them, that's what they're saying. There's a different way of interpreting the, the budget, and you can see the different programs that we have, like, you know, uh, de development of the uh, economy. How do we classify the... Um, so here you can look at the graph as well. So what's the difference between the 4.3 million? It's, and you can see all the different expenses below. But there's a lot of them. So you would just look at the uh, list and see what was spent on what. And you can see the whole budget. It's pretty nice. They actually give it to you in writing. Uh, 
So they're covering that at the other programs that they're making, like Bienestar, like four, three billion pesos or million pesos. That even when the budget is uh, a total of almost 6.1 billion, it has a series of uh, restrictions that are very important, which makes it has uh, variables. And there's a series of things that are uh, predetermined by law. So the part that's disposable income is relatively small. We propose 6.9 billion, but there's a cost of um, financial expenses. So a lot of it is already existing debt. So there's a lot of... So there's some of them that are not negotiable. They have to pay them, which are pre-existing. So there's... What they have to do is receive the um, recommendation from people, and then we incorporate it. And then the, they will decide. They will decide in the Senate. And we have no uh, problems with the execution. So there's also something about pensions also. These are people that have retired and the ones that are retiring. So, so, so you can see all the obligatory uh, expenses on the second row and the net cost. So it looks like out of the six thousand six billion in the budget, forty eight or four billion are already you know, obligatory. So there's very little variation, you know, for and there's like nine hundred are, are, um, so on the bottom, so 1.1 billion is, it's 18% of the whole budget. 82 of the budget is already fixed on one way or another because it's to respond to obligations or uh, previous debts or labor. Uh, situation, obligations with finance companies or, or money for the debt or they have to go to uh, private uh, organizations or federal organizations. So this is how the federal government does their budget. So the final considerations are what are we looking for in the with the uh, economic packet? Austerity, uh, discipline, fiscal discipline, and official tributation. So the third part is implementation. Um, so the second part was something about um, the budget. He's talking really fast, and they're going fast to the slides. The implementation of expenses and uh, execution of um, something and combating um, corruption. A big part of it is, and finally, what we're trying to do is not to increase the um, 
new expenses and uh, it's a platform that they're trying to gain the, the well of all. So they're going to take three questions and then they're going to start. Buenos días, Presidente de México, Senador Carlos Pozos, reportero de Petróleo y Energía, señor secretario señores invitados y buenos días a los que nos ven y nos escuchan eh, mi pregunta es esta My question is this. una vez ya entregado formalmente Once este paquete, formally given this packet, que I understand that you have an initiative to modify the fiscal code of the federation to the law también, rights eh, una iniciativa and also an initiative to hidrocarburos. Uh, regarding hydrocarbons can you explain to us what modifications uh, for the uh, uh, petroleum states out of these six thousand million million what is the amount that is being set aside for the debt and what is the amount that's for the uh, debt si los de and de with the alignments of politics, can they be modified eh, in 2021 once the, uh, no there's no more los, corruption eh, que que and that the money is coming in are being well used to programs uh, infraestructure and, and infrastructure que, and all that. I'm not sure what the question was exactly, really. <laughs> Basically, I want to ask regarding the resources that are being uh, given to PEMEX. Uh, this margin that you mentioned, 1.17 million, that was the margin for the 86 million pesos for PEMEX. What does that imply? Uh, this, are they taking away how much did they have to take from uh, the sectors of education and health? And I want to ask the president, some consider it that this <laughs> that they think it's too much money being spent on Pemex. So they're saying they haven't done a cleansing of the corruption in Pemex. They're trying to help. Is there a strategy to do a... Um, and how much do you uh, how much do you plan to save for next year? Oh my. He wants to ask all, answer all the questions at the same time. <coughs> the question is about growth. So there's, he's saying, how realistic is this goal, original uh, goal that they had? Can you, uh, excuse me.
Pemex es una empresa que ha estado sobregrabada a lo largo del tiempo. Y ese es Sorry, I had to adjust something. No I was, my air was freezing me. De los años. Entonces, lo que estamos haciendo, estamos flexibilizando el régimen tributario de Pemex en particular. Hay una caída en el, en el duque que representa alrededor de 40 mil millones de pesos. Entonces, en total, 86 mil millones de pesos. Esa fue la pregunta que nos hacían eh, por allá. Esos no están en los 1.1 billones, el 18%. Sí. Ese ya es el resultado. Eso ya está contemplando, este, está contemplando ambas cosas. El total de los apoyos the total a, of the supports a Pemex son un poco for más Pemex are eh, more than, de, de, un 1% more than 1 of the del, del presupuesto total. Of the total budget. So the eh, fact that we're investing. They've already. They've stabilized the production and now it's increasing. So we're talking about Pemex. Contrary to what the, the question said, it's not a good business, but he says in reality it is a good business because they've gone up. There's about 200,000 barrels additional. Say, multiply that by per day, $50 per that many. It's a very good business, actually. <clears throat> he says that uh, there's no corruption has ended. Yes, the biggest part was that they're not stealing the gas anymore because they were losing about 400, 40, 40 million in, with a theft. The total of the service of the debt is the payment on the debt interest was 728 million. And the amount of the interest is already set. They've stabilized the growth of the of the debt. And they've lowered the interest right so they're saying did you take money from uh from education and health and he said no none was removed from there yes there's certain areas that are going to be so they reduced in the presidency and in hacienda of course, that employs readjustments. It's very clear where the priorities are supporting the health and well-being programs that are going to be uh, set in the previous year in security and uh, 56 million for the National Guard. And it's in three different areas, and defense, and the marine, and, uh, <clears throat> and so there's a series of um, supports for Pemex regarding the uh, interest rate. Economy has two characteristics which are, in general, it has a uh, long-term growth. It's, it's an undulating uh, growth. There's some periods of expansion, and then there's deceleration. The best way to look at it is is like in the period of President Cedillo. He started with a 6.5% growth, and then, it, and then at the end he wound up with a growth of 5%. The important part that you need to look at the growth long-term goal is the median. It's been about 2.4 since 1983. That's what we have to change. And there's a series of politics which we are starting to operate politics long-term for programs for well-being and increment the capital 
que es la parte del país the que part of the crece. country which Pero grows the least que por qué el um, país no ha and Una, they, there's other politics that explain why the pública relativamente mm. baja y eso estamos cambiando y en particular mm. con la inversión en el sector energético segundo so, tenemos um, un sector financiero investment México es un país donde un número importante de las transacciones I'm sorry, se but this, eso lo estamos cambiando so there's a lot of the uh, investment de in cash there are initiatives that are trying to change the, the who can open bank accounts eh, investments so the amount of money that comes out of the out of the interest. So we, they only get 13% of the money that taxes were being. So they're trying to see if they can collect more that will prohibit, prohibit condoning taxes. Eh. And the, also the one that has to do with phantom uh, companies. Okay. The alignment is what determines how we construct uh, the growth. It is not part of the apparatus. Of the, what's very important, the collection additional has three principles with what we're constructing on our estimates. Improves operation. And we need to diminish the, the risk of corruption but, and also to be more uh, transparent as to where the expenses are going. That the people will be more comfortable that the money are being used for uh, goods and services specifically. Oh my gosh, more questions. <laughs> okay. Buenos días. Pedro Hernández, del periódico Ángel Metropolitano y el Día. Secretario, este, ¿qué van a hacer con las empresas transnacionales? What are you doing with the impuestos? international companies that evade taxes? Muy bien. Había otra allí, inmediatamente atrás de ti. Buenos días a todos. Silvia Rodríguez, de Grupo Milenio. Quiero saber si estas medidas de deficiencia dentro del SAT no implica que a la población se, se le va a estar presionando más y apretando más el cinturón para pues para compensar todos los, los recursos que no que no se pueden tener por otras vías como por ejemplo por la caída en los precios del petróleo que se ha observado ¿qué implicaciones va a tener esto para la población? Gracias ¿Y había una acá? Bueno, señor presidente, secretario, secretaria, señores eh, preguntarle de, eh, sobre la ley de ingresos. El ISR estoy checando que tiene un incremento en recaudación de 94 mil millones, es más o menos 5%. Es, eh, so, aquí, más o menos cuánto equivale how much eh, is it equivalent por eh, combate a las factureras for, y no, condon, con, no condonación de impuestos. Dentro del IVA yo veo solo 12 mil, 12 mil millones de pesos, más o menos en cifras cerradas. De they expect de about 11 million. So they think now they should be getting eh, 1 billion, 700,000. That could be an indicator that the consumption. Wow. De que va a haber más gasolinas. ¿De dónde van a salir esos 73 mil millones de pesos? Y por último, en el. So they're saying. De, yeah, they're de, asking de, a lot of questions, financial questions. El ramo 33, veo um, que bajan las aportaciones a los estados de, de 733 mil punto 4 millones a 731 mil punto 8. ¿Esto a qué se debe, secretario? Gracias. Muy bien. Eh, empiezo con con la primera pregunta eh, eh, el interés de nosotros es que todos paguen Empresas our interest is that empresas, everybody pays uh, local uh, companies and uh, foreign companies in general I would see that the big corporations have practices 
that will be working uh, with whoever forces them to comply with their uh, fiscal. A question that we have is has to do with digital economy. And let me and clarify one point. The, the taxes that digital companies are paying and all the company and all the citizens when you rent a vehicle via platform, you still have to pay for the unity. An important number of the taxes are retained taxes. The salaries, we don't pay it directly, but they're uh, taken out of our brute salary. Or when you buy to the store or buy something, their tax is already included in the purchase and it's retained by the companies. They will pay it on your behalf. The same thing we're proposing in the case with the digital platforms. And we're coming to agreements with them to facilitate that they can do it like in other parts of the major part of the economy so that Mexican companies and foreign companies need to pay the taxes. The reason that we want to assure has nothing to do with the budget, not to impress the, the contributors. What we're trying to assure us is that we are all contributing in the way the, the law says. There's still uh, evasion, which is very important. Like in the factories, it's, not, it's actually defrauding fiscal, and that's what we want to invite. But also what we want to say is assure, like, like we've suggested before, that if Mexicans, as they know where their money is going, Mexican people will feel more comfortable about their taxes. And the last question had to do with the law and ESR. There's more and more, like around 1.7 uh, billion federal expenses. Some are related to federal participation. The most important diminution it has to do with the federal government, about 2.6%. In the case of the IPS and the rent, it depends fundamentally on the way that we did the estimation. We have three ways we do the estimation. But technically, some have to do with long-term series, elasticity information that is already disposed of. There's an additional information that is not necessarily in the part you're looking at. You see what was approved in 2019, and you're comparing it to 220. We have different additional, and we know how much we've gotten, and we've estimated based on that. And that's how we calculated the estimations that we think we're going to have. So there's some numbers that we don't see on there that they're including, which is what they actually have received so far. Consumption is proportional to the growth. Okay. I really should have bypassed this. This is too much question. Okay. And I think I am going to bypass that, you guys. It's a little too much for me. You guys can somehow get this some other part. I want to get to where the part the president's talking because this is a bit much. And I don't really want to do it. I don't want to do it. It's too much. Sorry, guys, but I want to spend my time just talking the other stuff. There's too much stuff there. There's too many. Oh, my God, there's a lot. 
Uh-huh. That took a long time. So I guess it's important to them. They're spending a lot of time on it. There we go. I'm going to go back a little bit. Okay. He spent two months as Secretary of Hacienda. Uh, it's still too much talk. <laughs> so he says it's very important to let people know how they present uh, the, regarding the income and the budget for the next year. And I want to transmit one message to all of the Mexicans, people, that we are doing very well. That fortunately, we are going to continue to guarantee the well-being of the people. And this is possible because our formula is working, giving us results to end corruption and to make a government that is Asterius, in a very clear way. We do not permit corruption. And this has meant savings that are very important. The budget um, is more... Uh, you get more out of it. When you uh, have corruption, if you have a job that's 100 million, they actually charge you 300 or 500. Or there's lots of examples. Like they give them the money ahead and they keep the money and then they don't do the job. Or they don't give what they supposedly sold. So therefore, what we're doing, we're going doing well, because we don't allow the money to go like before through corruption. So now we're doing well because we don't have any luxuries in the government. There's not seven hundred thousand salaries a month. And no, the president no longer has a uh, 800 people guarding him. Imagine how much this means in savings. We are doing well because now the public uh, officials no longer go here and there to the foreign countries. There's no presidential airplane anymore. They don't use helicopters and, and they, they would take the airplanes even to go purchasing. They would use the helicopters to go play golf. There's no more of those millionaire pensions to the ex-presidents. We don't give six million pesos to the, to the attention medicine for the high-functioning officials. We don't have special uh, boxes of money for high-functioning officials. We have a government that's a, got austerity because you cannot have a government that's uh, rich or wealthy where the people are poor. This is the principal uh, fountain of financing the budget, combating corruption, and making a government that has austerity. This was not applied before. It's not within the so-called neoliberal paradigm. What's more, if you look in the discourses of the 
whole neoliberal uh, period in 36 years, you will find very few times did they even utilize or repeat the word corruption. What was said in the a discourse was talk about culture and politics and the agenda was being dictated by foreign countries that did not obey our reality. And that is why I transmit and tell you all the Mexican people in a very special people for the poor people and the humble people that you are guaranteed your supports that all the elderly will be giving getting their their uh, money day by day permanently their pension that all the disabled poor in a special way boys and girls their pension is guaranteed by the end of the year and for the next year the pension for um, older adults will explain how that program is going that we've uh, come to an agreement on a national level how, <coughs> how is that pension going pension for people with disabilities was guaranteed that they maintain the grants for impoverished students and they guaranteed that all students of um, a prep school have their grants and they guaranteed that all the ones that are in universities of humble families and poor families will get their grants and we guarantee that they continue the programs uh, for youth creating life and we're also guaranteeing the program like here he said was planting life and we're at 500 a million hectares to a million and then from 200,000 jobs to 400,000 jobs in, in small little properties. This is guaranteed also that the money will go to the producers directly. <coughs> Which is now production for well-being. They are guaranteed the um, the money for the um, lands and that there not be a, um, a um, that all the medications and the doctors and everybody be available that they continue to finish making the hospitals they guarantee and I'm making a commitment to initiate the program for uh, making uh, all the health workers full-time employees and to be precise, the budget, the real budget for the Secretary of Health, for the health sector, has <coughs> been increased by 40 million pesos. And we are guaranteeing that we will not increase the public debt. It has not increased, and neither will it increase in the following year. It is guaranteed that we will not increase taxes in real terms. They have not gone up this year, nor in the following. It is guaranteed that you will not increase the prices of gas, diesel, and electric this year and the following year in real terms. 
And I'm guaranteeing that we are maintaining a politics, economical, Procurando no gastar más de lo que ingresa. Making sure that we do not spend more than we a get to the public hacienda. Decir, that is to say, no van a haber faltantes, no va a haber deficit. there's not going to be any deficit or y esto missing funds. Nos permite and that will permit us que se mantenga estable that we maintain the stability of the peso. In, este año, In this year, it's one of the uh, currencies that has been most fortified, even with, la falta de entendimiento with the lack of understanding between the US government China. and China. Vamos we are also going to rescue Pemex. Pemex. And we've already started. We have gained to stabilize it. The production of stability of Pemex. What had not been done in 14 years is now to happening in nine months. Within 14 years, in a permanent way, the production was going down of petroleum. And that's how they left us, our situation in Pemex, of a constant decrease in production, and it was now stabilized. And now we're starting to to grow in production. But not, but just so you'll not forget that there's lots of amnesia. And I'm putting a parenthesis here to let you know that we're still waiting for them to ask for forgiveness. Those that 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 took this forth, this energy reform, and deceived, saying that they were going to be increasing petroleum production, and it was actually backwards, the opposite. They decreased production, and not only that, they increased to the, the price to the consumers for combustibles, a complete failure. Just to remind you, and I'm closing the parentheses, <laughs> last year, and I try to remain the most objective as possible, I will let you know that we were losing two, 200 million barrels a day, less every day. So, so those that think that we're not going to be able to, I say to them, but if it felt, if it was going down 200 million barrels, then why, if we're, we're acting with efficiency and there's no corruption and we're investing more in Pemex, why aren't we going to raise it by the next year, the production by 200 million barrels? You know what they used to do? The only thing that was important thing was, was the contracts and the corruption. And the people that were checking never noticed or the qualifiers. The half of the production was destined for the north of the uh, water. And, and, the, and the petroleum is, is in the uh, land. And that's where the, it's the least expensive to pull it from or extract it. But it was the companies that were being contracted and the thieving uh, uh, schemes. But then Pemex qualifiers said, oh, yeah, they're at a 10. It's very good. 
It's very well administered. Uh, a very good politics and economic politics and administration of Pemex. And it would have been a lot better in the energy form. So what did the people say? That what I tell them now is to have confidence we're doing well. There won't be a shortage of jobs. There's going to be lots of jobs. We're going to look for, for that there be lots of work, plenty of work, that not a single Mexican will have no opportunity to work. That's what we, the ideal we want to make a reality. And that every time the salaries should be getting better. That is for me a um, a point of um, pride that it's gone up like it's never done, gone up in the last 36 years. And that had an effect important where it has to do with the increase of salary this year. It's the best salary in the median in many decades according to the data of the Social Security, of what's written in the Social Security. So we're doing well, and it's going well. Of course, we have to continue working and not to slow our step. And I am very satisfied with the work that is being done by the Secretary of Hacienda that is headed by by Arturo Herrera. They are very good servers, public servants. But the key is not the most important principal thing is not to permit corruption and not to permit the luxuries in the government the superficial expenses. There was a government that was being maintained useless. So where are the, ex the savings of the reduction of the uh, budget? Imagine how many luxuries they had. Just Think of, now that they're going to sell this presidential airplane, so they were paying 500 million per year for the for the uh, airplane, and we won't have to spend that anymore because if you sell. Not only are you going to sell that presidential, you're also going to sell 72 airplanes and helicopters. And nothing is happening. On the weekend, I was in Tamaulipas. And I get to San Carlos. And evidently, they, they had just covered the holes from the whole road. So I'm there with the people. I say, hey, it's going to take some time for things to change these bad habits. This is a process. What's important is now we've initiated it. And I tell the people, look, look what they did. Because I was coming, they patched the roads and they covered the holes. <coughs> And the people were laughing. It's true, they say all. So what I said, so then I'm going to come more frequently. So Because if I don't come, then they won't even cover the potholes in the road. 
Entonces, tenemos que so cambiar. we have to change. Y se está logrando. And we are gaining it. Lo estamos logrando porque el pueblo nos está apoyando. And we are gaining it because the people are supporting us. Respaldo. And they're giving us their backing. Y no les gusta esto a los And they don't like this, these conservatives. Pero but that's not our fault. What fault is it of us? Of ours. They dominated in the last 36 years. And there's the data. They took the country to the worst crises in history. And without a doubt, it is the period with the most corruption in the whole history of Mexico. The thievery, the looting of the last 36 years. And it is incredible how they still they want to maintain that same regimen of corruption that was by, by the media and how there is defenders some due to conveniences and others due to conservatism it's not that they are receiving something, but it's because they're reactionary and conservative. This has always happened. But it's just that the, the reaction in these times is morally impossible. We're doing very well. <clears throat> and we are dedicating this whole morning to these with matters and we are now analyzing or need to analyze some more and more debate because we still have months and while they um, have to approve the law of income and then the budget and there's going to be lots of opinions. How was it before? A little while ago. And for a long time. Not only the six years before, but all the other ones. There was political agreements. And they used to make their purses and they used to take their cuts. I repeat and repeat it because it's very illus uh, illustrative. Cassis was a master of politics, a genius of politics. Three years that he was Secretary of Hacienda, he made the budget unanimously. <laughs> Come learn. You know how they used to do it? They gave everybody their cut because they didn't care about the budget as an instrument of development. What was important to go ahead because the function of the government was to facilitate the privatization to transfer funds, public funds, 
goods from the nation, money from the money. That was the essence of the government. That's what they devoted themselves to. They had offices for contracting so that they could give the conveniences to particular people. So all of them, they would give them their share. But the budget was not utilized for the development and for the well-being of the people. Because they supposed, imagine this, if, if the government facilitated it for the investors, that there would be economic growth and that if it rained high a lot on the top then there was a few drops that would fall to the bottom so what did they utilize the budget what was the state for what they had to do or supposed to do was to, to give their pensions or give their money to certain people, particular people, and then it would make it possible that they would create jobs, that there would be work, there would be well-being. And I remember how they used to say over and over again that instead of giving them a fish, they would teach them how to fish. So where are they going to get the fish? Even if they know how to fish. But that was a concept they had. As if the uh, richness or wealth was contagious. And then it would somehow get to everybody else. So that's why... They would give the, the cuts then, and they would give it to the uh, so civil organizations and even non-governmental agencies were getting the money. And then the sectors. And now, there's no more of that. Now we have the law of income, the budget, and we've done our part. No more of that. Let's see who, uh, if you want my votes, what are you going to give me? No more of that. No queremos que we don't want La Cámara de Diputados sea un tianguis. that the, uh, <laughs> that the uh, budget ya que um, by the este uh, Congress, uh, congressman be uh, con uh, like a swap meet. They want the money to get to the people, eh, the budget to get to the people. We would like to be able to give you more, but we've got so many expenses that you cannot eliminate. Imagine the payment for the service of debt. It's very painful. Seven hundred million just for the interest on the debt. How can you explain these experts to me? So during the neoliberal period, they received millions of millions of dollars for um, foreign petroleum when the price of petroleum was a was hundred dollars. So where is all that money? Why did it grow? Or the debt, why did it grow so much? 
if they had extraordinary income like never in the history of the uh, petroleum production. Imagine $100 per barrel. And at the same time, the debt grew. Just to remind you, because otherwise we might forget. Fox left it at 1.7 billion. Calderon brought it to 5.2, about more than 200%. And Peña and left it at 10 billion. So therefore, what is the difference? that in real terms it's not growing in this year and the next one. And we're making a great effort to gain this. And that's why the key is ending corruption because it was so much the looting they were doing, the stealing. More than we can even imagine. I still sometimes find little, not op opinions, but also where they were condoning, the, like the ones that wanted the airport in Texcoco, even though it was going to sink. Imagine. They had estimated 300 million. But if they acted the way the train of Toluca, which has also was supposed to be 90 million, then the airport would have been from was going to be three times as much as 900,000. But since we were going to support that that did not happen, but in any case, due to the, to the commitments, a work of 300 million how much it is, is it going to actually cost us? Even with paying the bonuses, the contracts that they already had, it's going to be about 150 million. I say at the minimum, I'm, I'm actually saving 100 million million, but it'll probably even be more that we save, and we're going to resolve the situation with the airport, and in a much better situation. Imagine how they forgot that in order to make that airport, they were going to close the actual airport, and the one from Santa Lucia, and in the actual airport, they had constructed, which was constructed about four years ago, the presidential uh, walk, which was a thousand million pesos, and all of that to the trash. But the terminal, number two, they made it with Calderon. They finished it. And they that was going to send that to the trash. Yes, it's going to take some time, but we're going to continue to insist that these absurd things, there's people, and the same thing with the medications. Because there was a campaign. It was a monopoly. Three companies. 
would sell 70% of all the medications to the government at elevated prices. So you know that if um, if they considered say out of uh, out of 1200 brands let's say 1200 it would be that they would um, a, a price there was only an, an there was only enough money for 500 of them so 700 were not available so those 700 that were not available would be bought without a budget or a bid at, at double or triple the price of what the actual price cost was. And I would ask, and why only three companies? And then, because they would say because they say these the ones that are they still have that influence because they were in here they were permeated it was taken the government had been taken by these companies and by all of them not just these the government had been kidnapped so they had they had their public servants at their service so they would say it's because they had three because they're the strongest and they're the ones that tolerated the delayed pays well how so if they delayed in paying them they would give them credit so that ends now in Hacienda why are you going to delay the payment we have the resources enough why are we going to delay the payment immediately let's pay them but why we're talking about if it was true this thing that they were overpaying due to the delay of pay so all these irregularities all these absurd things are going to change we're doing well and I congratulate the, the uh, group from Hacienda the, the team they work very hard and lot I am I'm aware of it sometimes they even stay and sleep here so that they can so they can take the accountability clear clear and the other is not to lie say things straight the way they are the way they're occurring and they are very professional so we'll see you tomorrow and thank you very much okay guys so yeah that was uh, interesting uh, so this was the um, meeting from today and I'm sorry I figure if you guys want to watch you can stop and pause the video and see all the details on all those numbers that they were talking about and um, regarding the uh, all the questions and answers it was just a little too much to translate all that um, what what I'd like to uh, concentrate on is uh, the president and the uh, things he's doing you know for um, Mexico and and um, yeah, that's, that's what I primarily concentrate on. But anyway, um, I want to translate something else. So I want to translate the um, meeting or the conference from 
the 16th of August. So I'm going to be doing that next. Okay, thank you guys. Uh, I, I had missed that one and I watched it today and I just thought it's very important. So I'm going to go ahead and do it. Thanks. Bye.